Hi everyone. I'm sure I'm not the only person who does this, but there are different roles assigned to each pen in my personal collection, such as the Pilot Custom Heritage 912 is used for Spencerian practice, the, the 823 or the Rouge Noir for long form writing, and then there is this little poem. In this video, I'll talk a bit about the history, showing some details and what makes this design special to me, and some writing samples and my experience owning this pen for the last two years. Also, please stay tuned to the end of the video for some of my thoughts throughout this pretty long year. The Bohem line of pens was first introduced in 1999 with two main models, the Rouge et Noir with the Ruby Gem and the Noir et Noir with the Onyx Gemstone on the clip. At first, I used to mistakenly call my example as the Noir et Noir because my pen was actually the subsequent model from the 2000, which is called Noir. The main difference is that the originals didn't have three trim rings other than that the first two editions of the Bohem are pretty much the same. I would link an exhaustive list of Bohem models in the description below so that you guys could date your pens as well. However, the Bohem line has been discontinued since 2015, so your best bet for one example are new old stocks and eBay, which could be a subject for another video. Looking at parts of the pen, we have a rather short cap that screws out, revealing nothing yet. The top finial has a typical long snow cap, but then the clip is quite unique with a paramount cut synthetic gemstone right at the bottom and finishes off with a platinum platen ring on the thread. On the barrel, there are three rings and the words Mont Blanc Bohème on the second ring. The barrel is a rather short one and there are threads on both sides that fits the cap. The end finial could be popped open to review a slot, allowing a short international cartridge to be inserted. So where's the nib? The Mont Blanc Bohème has a retractable nib activated by screwing the end finial on the barrel to use the pen. You have to screw the end threads clockwise until there's a clip to lock the nib unit in place. The cap can also be used to screw on top of the back threads, giving the pen a bit more length. The mechanism works quite similarly to a twist ballpoint, making this pen one of the few liner pens that makes use of the retractable mechanism. Going back to the nib, this one has a fine with the usual 144-145 nib size and design, and as expected from Mont Blanc, you'll have a wonderful writer. The writing experience for me has always been pleasant, however, this is not a pen I would take to work with me on a regular basis. It has too many moving parts, and in a way, it's not a perfect design. When I first got it two years ago, I didn't know exactly what kind of pens I was getting. And upon reading more about it on pen forums and videos, and of course, I came across stories of the retractable mechanism failing and damage, and Mont Blanc not accepting to service them. I was having a constant fear in the back of my head, not sure when the beloved graduation gift I gave myself was going to fail on me. However, as I look back upon my time with it, the Bohem has never once failed me. It might not be the quickest writer in the West, but it certainly has already spent a ton of pleasant hours with me and my thoughts. Similarly to the Rouge et Noir, in one of the previous video, the Bohem writes effortlessly. Yet there are subtle nuances between those two. A bit firmer, hugging the page with less shading, produce a rather constant line on the page. And this is my favorite pen to sign my name with. There's something about the acoustic of this nib against the page, and the satisfying swoosh to create the underline, and the movement of slowly removing the cap and retracting the nib, which ends with the pen going back to its resting position. The whole process is painfully slow compared to a typical snap cap or screw cap pen, but for some odd reasons, I love every second of it. Do I still fear the day it breaks down on me? 
Yes, I do. But there is also a part of myself wanting to cherish every single moment I spent with it, since it too shall pass. The word I speak of it here with the world today shall pass as well. But I hope from this video it inspires you a bit to pick up your pen and embrace your thoughts and memories. So maybe 10 years from now, once you find notes written by a younger version of yourself, you might get a decent chuckle out of it. Something to think about. And I also have some thoughts about 2020. It's been quite a long year for pretty much everyone and it's the same for me. I started the channel this year with around 200 subscribers and now it's way past 1,500. There are more than a thousand people watching my video every single day. Uh, this year I have a few plans and I look forward to go into the new year with you guys. Take care and thank you for watching. If you would like to support the channel, there are various links down below. And I would like to also thank uh, David for the generous donation. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.